coming up on Chopper's political podcast. So to be quite clear, if, if Nigel Farage came to lead Reform UK, oh, I think ten, I think ten Tory MPs would walk across the the the, the thing straight away. Welcome to Chopper's Political Podcast, recorded at my favourite pub, a stone's throw from the gates of the Houses of Parliament. Weekly, I bring you guests, gossip and stories from around my pub table in the heart of Westminster. This week, we have one guest, one guest alone, one of the original bad boys of Brexit, who's keen to come on this podcast in an election year to set out how he thinks it will play out, the future of the Tory party, Reform UK, and yes, that man again, Nigel Farage. Interestingly, on Google, one of the questions if you ask it about my guest is this. What happened to Aaron Banks? Well, let's find out. Aaron Banks, welcome to Chopper's Political Podcast. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Great to have you here, yes, in the pub. Yeah. Whatever happened to you? What do you mean, whatever happened to you? I don't know. Google (laughs) thinks you've gone. You've disappeared. Well, I think, obviously, it was all about Brexit, and Brexit's kind of, well, it hasn't faded away, but obviously the political side of it's dropped away. And yes, because you ran the Leave.eu campaign in the yeah, 2016. Yeah, I obviously got six of the best for supporting Brexit uh, in a major way, and um, I think, you know, with, with business and other things, I've just gone back to being a businessman. Yeah. So uh, You look unchanged to me since the... Well, that's very kind of you to say. 2014, when you emerged as a donor for... I've got, little, I've got a little bit less hair off the hair. campaign, Chris. But you first emerged, didn't you? You unveiled yeah, yeah, yeah. by UKIP as a, uh, yeah. on the day, the first day of the Tory conference. It was actually the 20, first day. Yeah. 13, 14? I think, I think, what, what year was that? It must have been 2015, was that? Yeah. That's anyway, the year you before unveiled Brexit, was by that, Nigel yeah. Farage as, yeah. as a Tory, as a, as a UKIP donor. Then you emerged onto the scene and you really enjoyed your time in politics. Well, I think it, I think it was uh, William Hague that said he's a nobody, no one's heard of him. Because I originally was going to donate 100,000. <laughs> yes, I was sitting there, I should come on, let's make it a million then. <laughs> so we need a press conference. <laughs> so uh, rather than surpri- surprising to me, all the press assembled on my front lawn and that's how it all kicked off, really. That's right. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah I was there. I was one of the... One of the one I of think the, all the journalists the were very disappointed. They were expecting the new MP to defect and they got, that's right. got me, you know. Yeah, we'll come on to MP defections shortly. Oh, I think there's going to be a few of those. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. How is Brexit going going for you, going for this country? Do well, you, I think you regret no, being no, a not champion a, of it? Not, not at all. I mean, you know, really nothing much has changed. I mean, all the dire warnings of huge unemployment and all the things that were going to happen. Um, I guess all you could say about Brexit is it's somewhat associated with the Conservative Party who have, you know, let the country down very badly. And so I think in some people's eyes, that's related to Brexit. But Brexit was all about the freedom to for politicians to do things outside of the EU. And the fact they've chosen not to take those freedoms is more down to the Conservative Party than, you know, Brexit. Could be a down to... The recent trade figures show... Actually, nothing's happened, despite all the yeah. We're the, the fourth biggest warnings. exporter, I yeah. Know, I read. Fourth biggest exporter, and I think the second biggest exporter of you know services. So we're a massive country that's just badly led and badly run. And that's the know? point, isn't it? So you see headlines in the Guardian recently. I saw one about Brexit blamed for polluting rivers. It's not Brexit that pollutes rivers; it's people. And if Correct. people can't use those powers yeah. to keep them clean, I mean, get, I, think, I, think that, I, think, I think there is a real problem here that the brexit requires politicians to be more grown up yeah and to actually run the country better now you take a country like switzerland that's very well run it's outside the eu or maybe associated with that um it's down to the the lack of political governance and i think my grist against the conservative party is as much the incompetence that's been displayed over the last 14 years rather than you know brexit did this brexit did that yeah Oh, yeah, essentially Brexit makes them work harder. I mean, yeah. a third of the rules were est- were decided in Correct. Brussels. Yeah. By, uh, and then here, this, order place, takers, this you know? place could blame yeah. Brussels' fault. Now it's all on this lot. Yeah. And if they don't want to do the work, get so get a new bunch in. Well, I think as well that helped the Brexit campaign in a way because for 25 years, politicians have blamed Brussels and never said anything positive about it. So they set the scene in, in their own little way for Brexit. Mm. Did you feel sympathetic for the... Tory government, there's been two big events happening since they became um, the one that allowed in 2019, of course, the invasion of, of Ukraine by Russia that caused the energy shock and, of course, the COVID pandemic before that. Yeah, I mean, there is an element to that. But, you know, if you look at the long term public debt of this country, it's been going up. You know, you will get shocks like that. I mean, 
history shows that it's not there's never really plain sailing at any time is there really <laughs> you go back to the 70s with the trade unions you at no point has there ever been a golden point where nothing was happening i mean covid was massively mishandled you know 500 billion pounds as boris might say spaffed up against the wall you know for something that really um in the in the round wasn't that serious and so it was think, for some but not for everybody that's well, the point. yeah exactly and i think um the politicians obviously they're not known for their calm you no. know approach to things and unfortunately the media people are not people like you but uh the media sort of they egg them on, egg egg them them on. on to do some rather silly you things. You do some egging it? yourself on social media. <laughs> you, you, you like a fight. Well, I, I think my new, I think my new resolution is going to be to to leave the little trolls alone. I, I kind of do engage with people. Um, yes, and you know you can't. Some people you can't help. So it's time to probably. Have step you, have you away. met with Keir Starmer or Rishi Sunak? Rich, I don't think I've ever met either. Yeah, mm. I met the two. Uh, I met McCluskey and. Uh, Various uh, other, yeah, yeah, from, yeah, um, of course they, they, they were all beautifully Brexiteers that couldn't say it. So uh, oh, back in the day, the scenes they were very keen on the whole thing. Yeah, uh, I saw you at uh, Nigel Farage's 60th birthday yeah. party. It did seem to me like the old Farage team, which I was following back in the back and forth 2015 election, yeah. really is getting back together. A lot of the old faces. There. Well, that that surprised me really. I I expected to see a lot of uh, sort of Nigel's newer friends, shall we say. Um, but actually, it was uh, like a UKIP reunion. Yeah. So and why I, is that? Is, is he up to well, something? Well, I think if it, obviously if he if he comes back, then I would think a lot of those people are going to instantly come in back into the new new structure. Mm. So the Brexit party, if it's got a weakness, probably lacks the kind of structure and political operatives. That, Referendum UK, UK yeah, party, or yeah, the, yeah. Reform UK party. But I think it's. Uh, I never liked the name, and I said to Nigel at the time, I think this is a it's a poor name for it. But actually. Nigel being a political genius of the years, um, actually probably got the name right because it, I think it is about political reform. I mean, the Labour Party are likely to take over from the Conservatives. And from what I can see, they're just going to continue the same policies with a different badge. You know, It's almost like the Conservative Party attempt to appear to be left, left-wing or socialist, to, you know, to be not nasty Tories. And it's almost like the Labour Party and government have got to be Tend to be conservative because they're trying to move into the middle ground, yeah, yeah, and move into the middle ground, not large Tory voters. Tory voters. So I think you just end up with the same, you know, uh, NAF policies um, yeah. that just carry on and on. And I think reform is the name of the game. You know, we've seen this. This is probably the most rotten parliament that's ever been seen, and that's saying something. I why mean, is it? Why is it rotten? I don't know, but this, you know, I think it was to do with uh, on the conservative side with the reforms that David Cameron. Put in place. Um, you mean the quality of the and, MPs and the quality of the candidates? Yes, I mean the you know you look at this Will Rag you know scandal that's going on. Mm. Um, sure, there's always been sex scandals in Parliament, and there always will be. But there seems to be an expansion of this kind of behaviour. Yeah, you know? he's un- put under pressure by um, a spear fisher, and yeah, he, he regrets what he did. Of course, I didn't even know what a spear fisher was. I think until it's I read a, that it story. It's, it's <laughs> you said back in December. You I looking- thought that was a cap. Is it another catfish? Fish no, that's a spear spe- fishing. I don't know. Okay, all right. Well, we're, we're too old for stuff, uh, Aaron. Exactly. And no one's spear fishing me. Um, you said in December. More's a pity. <laughs> more's a pity. You're looking to raise £10 million if Nigel becomes lead and yes, well, I think, leader. Um, Is that right? I think that there's a lot of disaffected Tory uh, sort of uh, donors. And I think, you know, it. I mean, Richard Tice so has actually done a great job to get to where he's got to in the polls but I think that shows more about the disaffection with both Conservative and Labour parties and I don't see, even though the Labour got a huge poll lead, uh, an affection for the Labour party, it's just a, a total and utter disgust for what the Conservative party have done Okay, so I think you know we see this sand shift and we've seen one Tory MP defect I expect to see others um, How many more? I think it could be a landslide because you, you're not going to be able to win as a Red Bull Tory um, up So how many Tory MPs might defect? So this is where I think you get to an interesting point of view, don't you? Because as reformer approaching the Conservatives in the poll, fast, first past the poll dictates that whoever's in second place, you know, could mm. then potentially get a wave of support from the other party. Mm. Um, 
But how the heck are you going to win as a Red Bull Tory? You can't. They, they've abandoned it. Their strategy now is to try and retain 150 seats in, in the home counties, which is why they're trying to be a little bit liberal. You know, liberal Democrats have, seem to have vanished into a... So how many do you think oh. Tory MPs might come across to reform well, you, the UK pre-election? Well, this is the point. You can't win as a Conservative MP up north. Your brand is completely destroyed. I mean, some some will. Where? I, mean, I don't Whitland. know. I mean, when I say up north, I'm talking about, you know... Yeah, Midlands maybe, northern England, but... Is it, but, the, but, but, but frankly, the polls are suggesting that so the Rebel about, Tory could, is going to be completely could dozens come up. across? I think more than dozens. Tory MPs I actually could defect. say that because... You know, they're at a point where they can't win as a Conservative, but they might have half a chance as a reform candidate. When you say that, you say that you think. Yeah. Or have you, do you know names that you can't say now or you can well, say I now? Well, I know at least three or four names of... Who are in talks now? Yeah, that people are, are, are talking about it. And I would expect this just to accelerate. But it, it, this is the Farage factor, that if he comes back and then they pick up another two or three points in the polls... So Richard Tice has done a good job, but I, I think the when you see 15 points in the polls, that's really the hope factor that Nigel's coming back. Right. But actually, if he does come back and gets traction and you start to see... I think there's, there's some polls out already saying that they're ahead in, with men in the Midlands. That's and right. North, if you break, and it, down, you break it, it down, they're already leading groups. in certain places. And I think the Tory party have given up on... They know they're going to lose, so they're trying to focus on, you know, re-emergence of one nation, soft Tory, the MP for Reigate, you know, it's that kind of mm. Tory MP. Um, so to be quite clear, if, if Nigel Farage came to lead Reform UK... Oh, I think 10, I think 10 Tory MPs would walk across the, 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 the thing straight away. And I think as well, he, that, that's part of his calculus. You know, MPs are in contact with him daily about this kind of thing. And I think... You know, if he does come back, it will be on the back of something fairly spectacular. Wow. I mean, he, of course, is saying he's not sure what to do. He's weighing up his options. I think he genuinely is. And, and I mean, Trump and being an MP. Back to you. Are you donating to Reform UK yet? I'm, I'm sort of, I haven't decided. And, you know, we'll see what Nigel does. I mean, he's, you know, there's the dragon. We've got to see if St. George gets on the bloody horse with his large sword. <laughs> St. George's Day is uh, <laughs> yeah. about two weeks away. It's, but but I do think that if he does, um, he, he you know he would be in contact with, you know, I probably already over ten Tory MPs that that would would do it. And I think this is where reform is interesting. I think the Tories are they're, they're facing a extinction level event like the Liberal Party did when the Labour Party came into existence, and so actually they could be wiped out at the next general election. And if they fall below a hundred seats. Then, I mean, you probably know the history of the Liberal Party better than me, but it, I don't think it happened in one go. But it certainly yeah, took two elections. Twenty years gone, hadn't they? Yeah, but and, it took two elections and there's no to wipe them out. You know? you will, as William Haig was saying, actually, quite interestingly, a few months ago, there's no guarantee any for any party that you, that you you haven't got to that point and you start to fade away. There so is I no think, guarantee. Also, I think things happen quicker in politics now than they did then. So with social media and with the way things develop. Camp. You know, we saw that with Macron, didn't you? He came out of nowhere and destroyed the political on establishment. Marsh, on Mars, he created that yeah. party for nothing. The guy in, in Argentina mm. who just came right out of the blue. Obviously, this is the danger for the Conservative Party, that they've let down their voters in, yeah. in a horrendous way. And and Rishi is just a... Te- I, don't, I, don't know, I don't actually know how you describe him. A technocrat... You know, he's a, a, he's of, a Brexiteer, that's what you call well, him. He, and he's, he's, a very he's, quiet, a, he's, he's a right winger he's on a hell tax. Of a, you know... Well, maybe not so. so well, anyway. why, would a, why would a right winger on tax appoint Jeremy Hunt as a chancellor to oversee the that highest taxes? To the markets, but after post the Liz Trust debacle. Well, I think it's a load of old. About you, about, about, but about you, <laughs> uh, Aaron Banks. So you and me talking, no one's listening yeah, yeah, yeah. in the pub. What, what, yeah. How big is the donation you would give if Farage came across? Well, I'm not going to say that at this stage. I'm, is it seven figures? No, I'm not going to say that. But what I what I will say is there are a bigger beasts than me that I think are lining up to back. Nigel in this sort of way, and is that know? this this ten million pound? I think that you get multiples of that because people are really angry, and I think there's multiple of ten th- million th- pounds yes, if, if Farrell yes, led reform. Yes, yes, and I think um, there's already Tory donors um, and people out, even outside of politics are just getting angry now, mm. and I think this is the it's the perfect storm for Nigel to come back into. But I do think at this stage he's genuinely 
undecided. Mm. But he, that's what he tells us. Takes him off to the flame. He won't be able to resist this. I just can't see it. Most can get burnt in flames. Well, that's very true. But also as well, you you, you know, going back to St George example. St. George can't sit it out with the Wheezy Boys and the Lemons, can he, on the bench? He's got to get on the horse and slay the dragon. The so. thing he's got to worry about, I suppose, and we're, why are we talking Nigel Farage all the time? But there we are, we are, because he's the person, he's the low star well, for Tories right now. Yeah, and I think he's he's a Thatcherite Tory that, you know, most members would fight. I mean, he may also as well, I think he may also be trying to work out the calculus of where the Tory party's going and actually whether the reverse takeover of the Tory party's on. Which is, of course, what Trump did with the Republican Party. He orchestrated a re- reverse takeover of the Republican Party. Against its will. Against his will. Very much against its will. And so that kind of thing might be in his mind as well, that actually, with the Tory party completely imploding, is there actually an opportunity, you know? And to do that, you've got to be an MP. Why did you commission a poll in Clacton asking if Farage could be its MP? Well, I'll encourage him to come back into politics, Chris, obviously. Did, 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 did he ask you to do it for <laughs> no, him? No, not at all. You used to do it. It's like trying to give a push. You're being mischievous, aren't you? trying to give him a push in the back, you know. Sort of. <laughs> but uh, but what, what, you know, what, 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 I, what do your poll find? I think, the poll, I think the poll found that uh, Farage would win by eight points there. And we always knew that. I mean, Douglas Carswell, you know, he always thought it was his immense charm and charismatic personality that one it might have been him. it might have been well it wasn't it was uh it was the most winnable ukip seat in the country and it's the most winnable seat for for reform really because you've got two it's a very old population at six probably 65 and it's you know it's a strong labor vote there but the labor vote down that neck of the woods love nigel so i think he would walk it going back to the rebel seats though as well if you if you're a politician um in a rebel seat Reform turn it into a three-way battle, which means you might potentially have a chance of winning it. Whereas I think under the Tory banner, they're gone. You know, if you were Richard Sunak right now, you'd be trying to get Farage on side. Now he told GB, they'll never do that. But he told GB News last October, "We're a broad church." When I asked the PM, "Would you allow Farage back in?" And he said, "We're a broad church." I thought he wasn't talking about a crime drama on the south coast of England. He means that we will accept people from from wherever they come. Why, why wouldn't you I just, offer I just, a deal to Farage now if you're soon I think uh, I just don't see it because the One Nation part of the Tory... The Tory party is split from top to bottom, a bit like the Republican Party and, you know, the rhinos or whatever you like to call them. I cannot... The Republican name only. Yeah, yeah, but I can't see how the One Nation Tory group, which is significant in the Tory party, would allow Farage back in. There's a broad church, but, I mean, come on. It's like sort of... And it's being tested right now with withdrawing from the European Commission. I mean, I'm and astonished. Right. Yeah. ECHR withdrawal yeah, is, is a new exactly. issue. I mean, cleverly says he wants to control legal immigration. He wants to have foreign courts decide our immigration policy. Which, which Sunak says he doesn't like it happening and he's willing to withdraw if it comes yeah, well, to Sunak it. Sunak says lots of things and does absolutely bugger all. You know, that's the basic bottom line. And he, he doesn't seem like a bad bloke, but he just seems hopelessly out of depth in, in what he's got to do. But also he's got a party that's split from top to bottom, so he can't actually ever get anything done. You don't done. think that you're doing Keir Starmer's bidding by bigging up reform? Why? Because it takes away, if you if you put together the support in the if polls... If reform weren't there, okay. Yes, you have like the if Tories reform, on 31%, yeah, aren't they? And they're still going to lose. And they're going to lose but bad. But with the don't knows, they're near 40 40%. Well, I don't know. So I mean, if you add the reform with, votes I mean, with the don't knows, you get I'm, near parity I'm with sorry, Labour. You know, so a political party shouldn't stand and, you know, put it forward a program because it might hurt the Conservative Party. There are a bunch of entitled uh, nobodies, as far as I'm said, to quote, you know, William Hay. Who are the, the, the yeah, Tories? the are. Tory party. They're, they're so entitled. It's, you know, the, the, that's the first thing they come up with. Well, you're helping Keir Starmer into, into government. Well, maybe you should take responsibility for 14 years of total failure in government. And I accept the point there was COVID and Ukraine and various other things, but they've been, they've been pretty dreadful. So why, why do they have a divine right to government? No. And I think, actually, the, the, the Conservative Party, as it currently exists, is going to be wiped out. And I think if Nigel does it, he's done a great service to the country. Maybe something new and better can you know, come forward in its place. 
Wow, well, Aaron Banks, whatever happened to Aaron Banks, he's back. <laughs> Will you be around politics this year? It's I a don't big know. year. I'm sort of... Uh, I, I, You're touring with aren't you? We're, we're waiting for our Lord and Master <laughs> to make his mind up on what he's going to do. Well, you know? with. to me, he's just, he's just <laughs> Nigel Farage. He's no one's Lord and Master, but it'd be interesting to see what he does next. Aaron Banks, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Chris. Chopper Chop the podcast in the pub here in Westminster. I'd love to know your thoughts about what you had thought uh, Aaron had to say. It was quite dramatic. <laughs> Do tweet me uh, at Christopher Hope on X. Email me, chopper, at gbnews.uk. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please do tell your friends. If you've really enjoyed it, please leave a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It helps other people to find it. Thank you to the brilliant team of GB News colleagues behind this podcast. Mick Booker, Jeff Marsh, Rebecca Nunes, George McMillan, Alice Tatalentier, all the camera people in the pub today. Most, most importantly of all, thank you to you for listening. If you want more chopper in your life and who doesn't catch me where department city on gb news at midday on wednesdays for pmqs live and keep it up to date with all our best political reporting on our website gbnews.com until next time cheerio